So sometimes this is a little messy, just like the biscuits. If it's really easy to roll out and it's really beautiful, what do I say? We messed up. Right? It really shouldn't be that easy to do. It is a little um, funny looking. All right, so when you sprinkle your clean area with flour, you want a light dusting, not a blizzard, okay? Because if it absorbs too much, wow, look at, the, look at how nice you guys rolled this out. I was rushing, right? There's this, it has such nice edges, and the warmth of your hand really got rid of any of those cracks. So they wrap this up. Notice you see a difference in color, too, right? It hydrated, and hopefully the camera can see that. You see the, the spots of butter that are in there and that are throughout. We can always add more flour. We can't take it out. So we're trying to reach about that size, but we also want to come around the sides. Oh, not a good thing, counter was wet. Right, we definitely don't want moisture at this point. That's why we have the flour. And again, we said we're gonna hesitate, um, we're gonna avoid going from the center and then back, right? You wanna go to the center and out. And I think the biggest tip is that you constantly move because so many times people roll it out beautifully. Oh, it's ready to go. And then it's completely stuck and you can't pick it up. Right? And that's just a terrible feeling because now you're going to scrape it all up and can you mush it in a bowl and start again? Mm -hmm. You really can't because you've created so much gluten, you've melted the butter, it really won't be the same. You're better off kind of just um, at that point piecing it together. So you see what's happening right here? It's cracked. So essentially, what do we have here? What is this, the main ingredient in this? other than the flour. Butter. butter, and it's just been in the fridge for 30 minutes. So the first couple minutes that you do this is gonna feel like you're getting nowhere. Also, the thicker you make this, sometimes people will put the dough away, or I notice students put the dough away in one big bowl. That's a solid, rock-hard bowl, you're not gonna get anywhere with that. So the filling for this, they made this beautiful filling. Uh, uh, they made a roux with equal parts fat and flour and then they sauteed some onions and some pearl onions also, which is really nice in a pot pie. There's asparagus and butternut squash and some chicken broth, but you could, you could make it with vegetable broth if you had that. So see this crack? It's just getting bigger and bigger and those edges are getting bigger and bigger. We may have to cut the time on the video on this and then come back to it because it takes some time. But the key is just to keep turning it. Let's put a little muscle into it. And also try to give it even pressure. So if you see one side is getting a little thin, stay away from that side. this up, really the best tool is to use the rolling pin to move it around. It's easier to do a circle. The rectangle is harder. That pie filling smells really nice. See how dry it is? Right? In comparison to our biscuit, which was definitely a softer, wetter dough. And this is and this is referred to in your book, category-wise, as a stiff dough, right? Do you guys remember when we did the other recipe with the graham cracker? That was also a stiff dough. Now you see what's starting to happen here in the center. Okay, so I'll try to work that out over here. So I'm a little square. happening in the whole thing rips. You can easily pick it up, put it into here, and make your patch. But you can also kind of use the warmth of your hand to kind of, sometimes it works, and you can melt it. How are we doing on time?
add flour yet, which means this was really nicely chilled. It wasn't too sticky. All right, so let's see where we're at for this. Okay, so if we were to fit this in the center here, remember we're also going to have a top. So at this point, we can roll out the other one, put the filling in here, and then we can kind of crimp the edges, cut a few holes for steam to escape. That's where you can kind of get creative. You're not really going to be able to give a nice fluted edge to this as you would in a pie pan because there's no side. So I'm not going to spend too much more time on that. But then by hand, I think I might take this out and make it a little bit bigger. But again, like you can see, you see the butter throughout, even more so in this one, because this one was worked a little less. You can see after it's been in the fridge, the pieces of butter, and it should make for a really nice flaky pastry.